Hello, good day and welcome to The Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda, a.k.a. Tony. Well, we're into March now, boys and girls, and it's time to up our rate of seed production, seed start production, for our vegetable crops for the coming year. Now, I've got some on the go that I've started off today, so we'll take a look at those and uh, see what you think. We're trying to do it on a bit of a budget as well, so as regards to your actual seed trays and things like that, you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. You don't have to spend a lot of money at all to create a lot of plants. So let's have a look and see what the guru's up to up at the plots. I'll catch you at the end. Bye-bye, guys. Well, hello, folks, and uh, welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm. If you're uh, not, or not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell notification so you don't miss another episode down here in Eden. Now, please comment, like, and subscribe. I've said that answer. We like your comments, and uh, we like your thumbs-ups as well. But today we're going to be doing some seed sowing in the form of, particularly in the form of, firstly, celery. Now, these are from King Seeds, golden celery, golden self-blanching, which means the, the, the lower stems will be blanched by the, by the other plants that surround the celery so you'll get the whiter or the lighter green stalks coming up and this particular one is one of the best flavored self-blanching celery varieties available quick growing and stands well a popular salad vegetable with crisp sweet stalks but is equally as delicious braised or chopped in casserole i'll take my glasses off i can see that i can read without my glasses on. High in sodium and potassium and traditionally used as a diuretic which makes you wee celery. So if you've got water retention, it's good for that. Yeah. And the kids love it, the kids love it. I like it, the missus likes it. So we're gonna start these off in, in, in trays, thinly sewn into these trays. Now these are homemade seed trays. And what this is, is a bit of food packaging food packaging which I've uh, popped holes in the bottom of as you can see there all I've used for that is a little screw so I've screwed through the bottom of it if you're careful you can heat up the tip of that and you can do them quick you got to heat the tip up with the lighter or or whatever but uh, that's what we're going to be using free that comes with your food packaging doesn't it so uh, the idea of this today especially with the celery one is that we're going to be doing it on the cheap these seeds you get a thousand celery seeds on average in these and it costs you one pound fifty now celery in the supermarket you'll get it well organic celery you're, you're going to be talking about a pound per plant so potentially I'm not saying it's going to happen but potentially you could grow a thousand pounds sterling's worth of seeds for practically nothing for less than a fiver one pound fifty for a thousand these are and then with the compost and what have you well that's not bad is it right let's get cracking okay easy as pie we've got our compost mix here our seed start compost mix and all that is is 25% vermiculite which is this goldy stuff, vermiculite, which helps to open up the, the growing medium. And it does retain uh, a little bit of water as well, keeps the dampness in there. It allows the roots to grow when they start growing. It will allow the, the roots to better spread through the soil. So it, one, it stops it becoming waterlogged, and two, it can help to retain water as well. It's like a, a, a double-edged sword, really. And then 75% of the sieved compost, sieved standard compost, and that's going to be our mix. And all, all we do, it's a dead easy process. It's not complicated. Not much about growing your own. It's complicated. You just fill up the seed tray like that. Tamp it down a bit so it gets in the nooks and crannies and then level it off a touch. Tamp it down a bit. Now the reason I've not filled it up right to the very top is because 
we're going to be scattering the seeds upon the surface. So if I get my seeds out now, we'll do that. As ever, open the packet carefully from the base. And that way you're not losing any of the information that's on the pack. Because I'm going to be sowing about 100 seeds in here. So I'm not going to be sowing the full thousand. But I'll be thinly sowing them. And then when they get to a size that you can prick them out. We'll show you that later down the line. Prick them out and pop them on. Um, you're separating the plants then and, and letting them grow on. Actually I'm probably going to put about 40 in here. Because it's only a small tray this. But we can open it up. Tip ourselves out a few seeds. They're very small, these celery seeds. Very small. Tiny little seeds. Can you see them there? Very tiny little seeds. And we'll thinly scatter them. On the surface. The lighting's not the best in here because the sun's behind me, behind me and to my left. So I just hope you can see that okay. But that's what we're doing, we're just scattering the seeds on the surface. A thin scattering. And then we get a little bit more and just gently put it on. Now you don't want to deeply cover these at all because the smaller the seed, the less coverage it needs. So we'll do that, give it a bit of a damp off. Not rocket science this guys, at all. We'll dampen the surface. And then they're gonna be put into um, a bit of water. A bath of water for a, a short period of time until the moisture's taken up through the growing medium so you want it damp but you don't want it really wet you just want it damp okay so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to put a label on them as well now okay now again we're reusing and recycling don't, don't know whether you can make that out um today's the 5th of march 22 it's celery golden self blanching so i put all the information on that one side of the ticket because on the other side of the ticket I've got last year's white Lisbon onions. So I'll know that with, that with that date, that's what we've got in here. Okay. And again, you're not wasting money. You're reusing them. What you can do as well with these, um, with these tickets is um, potentially, if you wanted to, you could get some nail varnish remover, which is uh, basically it's acetone, and you can wipe them and, and they'll become clean again then I haven't got any acetone I haven't got any nail polish uh, nail varnish remover but um, that's what you can do and you can clean them up you can get it cheap from the chemist I think that you don't need much as well you only need like a little couple of drops and you can get you can get them clean but uh, that's another tip for you if you like and you can do that but that's ready now to get it to get put in the bath and there it is it's in the bath in about half a centimetre or five millimetres of water at the bottom, that through capillary action then will draw up like a sponge and moisten the soil. But it's also inside the cold frame, which is inside the super duper polytunnel that's made out of trampoline frames down on the little farmer's farm. So that's going to be, going to be okay. Look at these as well that we planted couple of weeks ago and was that so they've been in there now about three weeks so it can take three weeks to burst through but these are bursting through these early onward peas we've got the broad beans the bunyards exhibition broad beans at the back there they were put in at the same time and they're bursting through the surface now have a look back at that episode if you want they're planted a Inch and a half, two inches deep. The bunyards are planted about about that far <coughs> under the surface. But they're bursting through now and the root systems will be coming through as I can see here. See the root systems? They're popping out the bottom. 
So yeah, not too long now before they'll be getting planted out. Again, a couple of weeks ago, we planted these, or we sow, we we sowed these uh, Paris silver skin onions, and you can just see them sticking their noses up there. Can you tell? See them little noses being stuck up. They're popping through. It's great. They were only done last week. I'm not expecting them for another week or so. Uh, but that's the cauliflower. See if we've got any leak action. We've got any leak action yet? We shouldn't have. Be another week yet for the, for the leaks. No, we haven't. But the silver skins are popping up. See. Yay! Look at that little beast. That's the larvae of the nocturnal night moth. Night owl moth, I think they're called. Nocturnal owl moths. Commonly called a cutworm. And they'll have a chomp them on your uh, on your little plants. Brassicas especially, I found that in the brassica bed. I've just been doing a little bit of hoeing in the brassica bed and there he was, a couple of inches below the soil surface, curled up in a ball. Little swine. He'll be getting fed to the robins. Yeah, cutworms. A larvae rather than a worm, that. Of the owl moth, nocturnal owl moth. But we'll be dealing with that. We'll have to sort that out then. I'm going to have to, what I'll be doing is I'll be checking uh, the bed and having a rummage through, see if I can find any of these. They're usually about that size, three, about three or four centimetres long. Curled up in a little ball, but I found it. I found him in this bed here. So there'll be others, I'm guessing. So as we protect our brassicas when we're planting them out and through the season, we're going to be putting collars around them. Um, for the cutworms, you use a toilet roll or something like an old toilet roll, and you plant that in the ground a few centimetres before below ground level, and it prevents the cutworms from getting to them. You can use wormwood as well. You know the wormwood. Um, uh, insecticide you could use that but a simple preventative so a protective thing like a a toilet roll around it will do the job you just got to remember that you, you'll need to probably cut them off cut it out and lift it out as the plant grows and gets bigger because the stems of your brassicas can get quite fat so it'll uh, it, it'll restrict and restrain and throttle your plants if you don't but yeah, if you, if you bury them in about an uh, inch and a half, two inches below, then when the cut worm comes out of a night and he tries to get to your stems, they, they chew around the stems and cut the, and literally cut the stems so the plant falls over, especially the young, the young plants. They'll have a field day with that. But also as well with the brassicas, we've got the um, cabbage uh, root fly. So again, the collars are going on for that. Just a matter of prevention, but as we go through the season, we'll show you all this, the, the, the ways and, and methods. But yeah, just have a look online if, you, if you're concerned about that. That's going to be in about a month's time when we plant out that we're going to be thinking, mm, we need to be doing something protective-wise. I have got a video on the, um, the root fly and what have you. And um, yeah, putting lime in the soil. Okay, see you in a bit. So yeah. You've got to protect your plants, especially the, brass the brassica family is assailed from all sides really. You've got the, the cabbage white butterfly that lay their eggs on your cabbages if they're exposed, and your brassicas if they're exposed. And then the larvae are produced from that, which are the caterpillars, and they'll chomp through your, your, um, your brassicas. Pigeons are a big threat. You know, if you again on X, but we grow them in tents. We have uh, netted tents to keep these pests off as best as we can, um, and that prevents the pigeons, the cabbage white butterflies, getting to them. Um, we'll be looking at all these preventative preventative measures as we go through the season. You'll see all this um, for cut worms, for root fly, etc. You can only do what you can do. You do your best with it. You know, give them the best start, give them the best nutrition as they're growing prevent club root as well that's another one that you can find on the plots club root is another disease soil borne disease that can attack your uh, the roots of your brassicas and give it that clubbing effect there's videos previous videos on this but as i say yeah there's lots of things that can assail your brassicas 
we're going to be making some uh, or starting some more uh, brassicas today in the trays but yeah as they go through the life cycle which takes about three to four months that attack from all sides stay tuned all right so speaking of disease resistance and sort of pest control in general the club root is a soil borne kind of like a virus or a bacteria that swims in the soil if you've got particularly damp soil it's no good for it so we use lime when we're planting out we put a couple of teaspoons of lime in the planting stations but also we favor the club root resistant varieties now this is a zaragoza f1 we started a couple of zaragoza off or a tray of 12 off a couple of weeks ago but we're going to be doing another one now the zaragoza f1 has got the club root resistance now we don't we're not particularly plagued at the moment with club root but there is club root on these plots i've got two beds that i can't use for brassicas anymore because of that issue you've got to keep your tools clean as well when you transfer so you don't transfer it into the other beds lots of different things about club root uh, that you've got to um, keep an eye on restricts the growth of the plant you get weak weedy not very healthy plants with club root so we, we want to avoid that so we're using the club root resistant stuff okay we're going to plant some. all right so we're going to sow a few of these into here into this cell so 12 so we want 12 seeds i use my sharpie because you've got to sort of put them underneath the ground by around about three quarters of an inch or so underneath the ground so if i set my finger there i can quickly go around them with the sharpie put my impressions in and then we'll get the seeds in like i say we did sow a couple of these um two weeks ago we sold a, a tray of 20 and I, re I just peel off the bottom of the pack there and then there's a silver foil pack inside it's hard to do this with one hand look at that dexterity and there you got there you've got your uh your zaragoza f1 seeds in there i'll show you the seeds but you can continually sow these throughout the season for the next couple of months at least anyway and then hopefully then every couple of weeks we'll have about 12 cauliflowers more like 10 in the end but there we go every couple of weeks we're going to sow these so we don't get a massive glut of them so here's the next 12 that we're going to we're going to start off today we'll be putting them in there as you can see they're pretty tiny those seeds very small so you've got to be careful when you plant. You, you often times drop two in by accident, but it's no great problem that. Although we've only got a few seeds left in that pack, as I've found out. There are only 25 seeds in it. So uh, I've got to be judicious. Okay. That's the end of that. I only had 11 seeds. 11 seeds left in the pack. So that one's not going to get one in. But if you look in there, you see the little seeds hopefully at the bottom they should all have one in apart from that one oh there's a two in there oh, I'm not fishing it out now right then all, all we have to do then is just slightly like I say they're about three quarters of an inch or around about two centimeters deep these ones of the club root, club root resistant cauliflower Zaragoza F1 same story it's not rocket science guys and I don't want to bore you to tears with too much of this but there you go Zaragoza F1 find somewhere to put my ticket there Oop, there we go and then again a spritz on the top and then they'll go in the bath Once they're covered over, the seeds are more or less in place, and you're getting that soil contact, soil contact with the seed. The seed should then get the idea and hatch itself. Probably take about 12 to 14 days to pop out, maybe even longer at this time of year. But the temperature in here at the moment inside the polytunnel is 20 degrees. 
20 degrees there. And um, if I can get the packet, where's the packet gone? Sorry about this, folks. Get the packet. 13 degrees C is the minimum temperature under glass, which they will be. So, yeah, of course, the temperature drops at night, and we're not out of our frost date yet. But I'll put them next to the others. I've start, I've um, sewn a couple of caraflex as well, which are like a hispy or pointed cabbage. Again, in the brassica family. And they're next to them. So you've got the celery, you've got the caraflex pointed cabbage, and we've got the Zaragoza F1. Fingers crossed. So there you go, get on it. Now's the time, get cracking. In fact, through March and into April, that's where we, that's when you're going to be over in the UK like we are, starting off your seedlings, uh, ready to be planted out in the allotment or the garden later. So, uh, yeah, do not dilly-dally. There's plenty to be done. Catch you later, boys and girls. Keep growing with your heads down. We love you all. Bye-bye. So all together, there's 28 concrete breeze blocks there that we've reclaimed from Toby's place. They'll be put to good use. So we're going to get a raised bed made out of them and it'll be a pretty substantial raised bed. Yeah, 10 inches deep. That's good.